Attention! The following tax return information for the Watchtower Society is publicly available at citizenauto.org. Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of Pennsylvania, 625, Red Mills Road, Wallkill, New York. Exempt Organization Business Income Return, IRS Form 990-T. For Tax Year 2014. This is the most recent return available for the Society. On this return, the Society reports income from unrelated, for-profit, business activity, in this case, ownership interest in investment partnerships, totaling $2,703,029. Which was received from the following two limited partnerships, or LPs. Milestone Real Estate Investors 2, LP, income received of $2,597,900. North Haven Offshore Infrastructure Partners, income received of $157,810. These are private investment partnerships and are far less regulated by the U.S. government than are the public stock exchanges and bond markets. They are not open to ordinary investors, but only open to a limited number of accredited investors, that is, high net worth individuals with substantial annual income, or institutions such as pension funds or university endowment funds, since they require a very large minimum initial investment, and because this type of investment can carry substantial risk. Each investor then becomes a limited partner. Therefore, they meet the definition of hedge funds. The question is, why is a religious organization like Watchtower investing in hedge funds, which can engage in aggressively greedy business practices that may be morally and ethically questionable? Based on the total income the society received from such funds in this one year alone of over $2,700,000, and assuming a 10% annual rate of return, which one of these funds claims to provide, this could indicate that Watchtower has almost $30 million invested in these two funds alone. There are four prior year's returns also available, beginning with 2011, indicating that Watchtower has invested in several other of these funds, as well. This raises a second question. Where are they getting the millions of dollars to place at risk by investing in such funds? Well, when was the last time you saw any financial reports for the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society? We know that there is no transparency when it comes uh, to the society's finances. However, since the society has begun to engage in for-profit investment activities, apparently since 2010, they are required by the IRS to file these forms, which are known as uh, Form 990-T, to declare their taxable income from investment activities, since investment activities are in no way, way related um, to their charter which their corporate charter is to um, preach the good news of the kingdom. So thank goodness for citizensaudit.org who makes this information um, available online and I will try to post the link um, to the page where you can go and download all five years um, of these um, tax returns. Um, which began in um, 2010 and go through 2014, which is the one that we're looking at now. So let's quickly take a look at this form. Um, we see at the top that this is indeed name of organization, Watchtower Bible and Tax Society of Pennsylvania. Um, the line 
there, line H says, describe the organization's primary unrelated business activity. And it says investment activities. And we see on line five, income or loss from partnerships and as corporations attached statement and we'll look at that in a, in a second here um, the statement that itemizes where this information um, or where this money came from two million seven hundred and three thousand and twenty nine dollars okay so let's go then you have to flip through the the return itself is four pages long and then you statement one two and Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of Pennsylvania again at the top. So we look here at statement two, or excuse me, statement three, income or loss from partnerships. And here is where these private equity partnerships, which some call hedge funds, are listed. The largest amount was received from Milestone Real Estate Investors Limited Partnership, two million five hundred ninety-seven thousand nine hundred dollars, um, and the next largest amount was received from North Haven Offshore Infrastructure Partners, a limited partnership, one hundred and fifty-seven thousand eight hundred and ten dollars, um, and then there was a little bit of a loss from a third limited partnership, again, what some call hedge funds, um, 52000 for a net investment income from partnerships of, of a little over $2,700,000. And again, to, if you figure that you're getting the 10% investment or return on investment, um, then you, you can times that by 10, $2,700,000 by 10 is um, about $27 million that you would have to have invested and probably a little bit more because you're probably not going to be get, getting a full 10% investment. Now we can go look at the previous years, one of the previous years returns. I, You can see here we have um, income and loss from partnerships and we have one, two, three, four different partnerships. And these are, this year they sustained losses on all of these um, investments, all of these limited partnerships um, for a total of the $658,000 loss. And again, this shows the speculative, risky nature of these private equity funds or these hedge funds as they're sometimes called and so this begs the question why are they investing um, in this speculative area of investing which essentially involves uh, boils down to gambling gambling with other people's money money that was contributed etc by hardworking uh, members of, the, of uh, Jehovah's Witnesses. So, really, what is the purpose of this uh, of these kinds of highly speculative and risky investments? Now let's look at the web page for this miles, milestone real estate investors. Now, they offer four of these funds. Um, and the society is invested in fund number two. And we see here they describe their investment strategy. And let's read this and see if this sounds like um, the type of thing that a Christian organization should be investing in. Bottom half of the page, it says, Milestone seeks assets where we can create value and enhance investor returns. Milestone will target assets that include properties held by motivated sellers facing balance sheet problems, unfunded capital requirements, or liquidity challenges. In other words, sellers who are 
in over their heads in debt. Okay? And liquidity challenges means they cannot meet their debts. They cannot, they don't have the cash coming in to pay the bills that they owe. Properties owned by partnerships or families facing large tax implications. In other words, people who owe the government more tax than they can pay. People that are in debt to the U.S. government. Underperforming loans and real estate owned by lenders and servicers. Okay, so there again, you have uh, probably foreclosed property um, in that group. In other words, distressed properties. It's almost like taking advantage of, of companies and individuals and families who are having a hard time paying their bills and they're in debt over their head facing foreclosure. It doesn't sound like what the type of investment goals that a uh, religious organization should have. Let's see what the scriptures say about persons who engage in activities such as this. Ephesians 5 verse 5 says, For of this you can be sure. No immoral, impure, or greedy person, such a person as an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God.